Hey there, this is a video I wanted to make comparing the Squire Vintage Modified Thin Line and uh, Shoreline Gold here. Uh, not the most recent classic vibe thin line, which is a little more expensive. Uh, this one compared to a <clears throat> uh, from guitarfetish.com, Xavier or Javier, however you want to pronounce it, uh, thin line model. Each one has its cool uh, benefits, cool things to it. It all depends on what kind of guitar you're looking for, what price range, you know, how often you're going to use it. This one here, a uh, family member had me pick it up for them and do some modifications to it. And uh, the other one is uh, just for myself. I just wanted a, a cheap thin line. I was able to get it at a price, at a decent use price. Um, got this one used also. Um, the main thing, so I'm not going to be doing too much playing on this video. It's mostly talking, going over the different features if you're considering either one of these guitars. They're both uh, worth worth the money. Um, I'm someone who, who doesn't buy new guitars anymore just because in case you get tired of it and you want to sell it, uh, you're going to lose money on it. And uh, there's plenty of deals like that on Craigslist where people buy a guitar and you know less than a year later they're trying to sell it and they want plenty of money for it. Anyways, uh, main I was going to the main things I didn't like about this um, was the paint job on this vintage modified thin line um, is the, it's extremely thin. It just chips like crazy. It's just uh, I mean I plan on having to repaint this guitar in about three years. Um, also, it's a little bit heavier than the Xavier because this is only hollow on the top part of this guitar. It's not hollow on the bottom. The other Xavier is extremely light because it's a true semi-hollow where you've got the bottom section. When you take out the control, you'll see this is basically a solid body guitar down on the bottom. Um, another thing I don't like about this guitar is that it's got the vintage radius, the 7.5 inch um, curvature on it. Uh, if you don't know, know much about the radius, you can get a free set of um, radius gauges off Pick Guardian. If you could Google Pick Guardian PDF uh, radius gauges, you'll see something you can print out, and you'll see how the difference in the curvature of a vintage seven and a quarter inch radius versus 12 inch radius on the Xavier there, which I'll pick up and show you a little bit. Uh, I went ahead and replaced the felts on these strap knobs. And cheaper guitars used to come with at least cheap felt, but nowadays it's like that kind of a black vinyl, whatever it is. So I went ahead and replaced that. Um, I added a string tree for the G and D because it was the open G was just kind of vibrating and whatnot. And much, no matter how much you put an angle on it, um, then that that's okay. Um, once it wears out, I'll probably replace it with bone, um, just because you know what Fender calls imitation bone is really just uh, not Corian but uh, melamine, you know the countertop stuff or the other countertop stuff. And the problem with the vintage radius is that a lot of times it's hard to get rid of the buzz completely. Um, Set up. So I had to change the neck angle on this, and I noticed in the neck pocket there was a big lump that was causing the neck to be forward. There's just a sloppy routing job. So I filed and sanded it, and even did it some more to help get the angle down because the back of the neck was pretty flat and straight. I ended up sanding and uh, about sanding the bottom of the back of the neck just a little bit because it seemed like the neck was at a slight angle. Um, keeping the base side up actually uh, as far as the neck angle. So I, I felt to the back of the neck uh, where it joins the body just to get it evened out so it was straight. Um, mm -hmm. The frets on this are not seated as well. Um, you can't see from this direction but from the other direction looking at it the top of the fret is not completely touching the fingerboard. Now you see that I've seen that on various guitars here or there for a few frets or whatnot this is probably the worst case I've seen where there's just a consistent gap on one side of the fret all the way up where they, they, I guess they, they didn't drill the um, fret slots, uh, didn't cut the fret slots deep enough. Um, I tried hammering down just a little bit more with the uh, hammer that I got and uh, it didn't really do too much and um, I'm not sure if the fret wire is softer because this person that I, that I got this guitar for uses a capo up here and when I got it back to do some more work on it there was already a bunch of marks in there um, and so I was really surprised on it. The uh, person that uses the guitar uses usually 10 gauge strings uh, for the E and this particular uh, Squire Thin Line Vintage Modified series has the Gibson scale, the 24 and 3 quarters inch scale so I recommended that they, because they're a lead singer and they play rhythm most of the time I recommended that they went to 11's to see if it would be better as far as live performances when you're hitting hard and it's not kind of going out but it but still not too hard to bend. 
Um, and so, so far they like it, and I think it sounds better, the 11s on here. Uh, another thing I did, which was to swap out the, the bridge for Wilkinson, um, got one off eBay for like 25 bucks, including shipping. This is the original six saddle bridge. This was just all just too busy, too many loose parts and whatnot. Some of the saddle height screws I actually had to uh, use some lock thread, uh, Loctite thread locker on it because it was just vibrating loose. And uh, But I did use the same four mounting screws so that they would go into the same slots on the wood to get a perfect mounting on it. And um, so that was just a very nice cheap, cheap upgrade. Uh, the Xavier comes with a three saddle one. Uh, on the Xavier, I don't think it's compensated, but it's it's it plays in tune. Um, the pickups, another issue, what, why I don't like the seven and a quarter inch vintage radius because these particular pickups from GFS. This is a Neovin uh, pure vintage, and this is a Little Puncher medium output one. And it's also, uh, I mean, they already say the Neovins need to be adjusted very close to get a good sound, and they do. But also with the little punchers, they need to be, this is basically almost like a Hot Rails clone, but a true Hot Rails, which is only in the high output range, this is a medium output, um, the blades are arched, so they'll follow the radius of the strings a little bit better. With these blades, they're dead flat, so you're not getting as much responsive, like on the D string, is not as responsive, because you, if you get it too close, then the, B, the, the um, E string is a little too boomy. Um, so that's one thing you would consider if you have a guitar that vintage radius, unless it's like one of those um, with the wide range humbuckers where you can raise the screws in the middle. That was, um, you got to be careful with your pickup choices. I would suggest a little 59 from Seymour Duncan where you can adjust the little pull pieces on there to get the metal strings higher, get a better sound out, a more balanced sound. But this particular person doesn't play that much. Uh, and it's not that bad. It's not that he's not going to return this pickup. I'd suggest they return it and get a Seymour Duncan. But it's really not that bad for what he plays. Um, that was the whole point of staggered pickups in the old days, which was to compensate for the high arch of the radius, and also because the G-string was wound, which the inside was thinner than the B-string, so that's why you see like the, the G-string a little bit lower, but um, stuff like that. Another modification I did, which was the coil tap, the coil cut, the humbucker bridge position um, that goes from having a 10,000 uh, 10, resistance humbucker to being a 5,000 resistance single coil. Just for an extra added benefit, um, I don't like push pull pots too much, uh, but it does make the middle pickup position sound more like a single coil. Um, when it shielded the cavity in there with some copper tape, uh, added some more shielding on the top of this compartment here on the pick guard there. Uh, I did not um, shield the cavity pickup cavities because these are noises pickups. There's no reason to do it. And uh, otherwise, it's, it's been pretty good. The only thing I don't like about working on this particular guitar is that the overhang of the, the fingerboard overhangs the pickguard. So you got to take off, or at least loosen the neck every time you got to take this pickguard off. It's a real pain to work on. But um, otherwise, it's all it's all right. The tuners, the tuners are good quality. I did originally switch up. Um, the pots because it was a little bit too thin for the bridge pickup that comes on it and the neck pickup was really nice. Um, that's probably one modification I would suggest if you're going to keep the stock pickups or if you're using single coils and the bridge sounds too thin which is to get a concentric pot like a Dan Electro and have separate tone controls to put a 250 in for the bridge and a 500 in for the uh, neck pickup and that way you'd have a, and they sell those on eBay I think the total investment between the, the pot and the concentric knob I think is like maybe twenty dollars. Um, it's not that hard to do. And this came with a treble bleed cap on the um, bottom so as you're turning it down. Oops. I think the, like I said, the tuner is a good quality. Uh, the neck's got a nice feel to it, not too thin. Sometimes you get Telecaster necks that are really, really thin and they can be uncomfortable if you're somebody like me that has kind of short fingers. Um, your palm doesn't bend, obviously, but otherwise, you know, it's a it's a nice guitar. It's um, another problem with adjusting the neck angle, which was the um, um, the saddles were almost maxed out in height, um, and so when you adjust the neck further back, you usually have to raise the saddle height. So that's why I had to. That was another reason why I filed down both services and all that to to get that done. But Squire Vintage Modified. Thin line. It's a nice guitar.